Well, neurologists uh, face multiple challenges. Uh, in some countries and in some times, neurologists uh, were involved in the general care of COVID-infected uh, people, patients. Uh, in several countries in Europe, uh, neurologists have to be uh, um, involved in the diagnostic and management of these patients. So um, they actually had to forget their um, neurological kind of background to be involved in the daycare of patients uh, because of the number of patients that had to be taken care of. In other areas, particularly in my uh, country, neurologists are involved with the neurological complication manifestations of the disease. And we do know that uh, the uh, nervous system is frequently involved uh, in COVID, in the COVID pandemic. So we have an increasing number of patients that we have to take care of. Neurologists are also involved in difficult decisions concerning, um, you know, which patient may profit or may not profit of intensive care um, treatments. So um, neurologists have to um, involve themselves in these difficult discussions. But I would also like to say that neurologists are facing the challenge of the patient that uh, could not come or did not come uh, to our hospitals or to our outpatient clinics because the system had to be um, you know, reduced, I mean, for the uh, general um, population in favor of the pandemic patients and also in um, taking care of patients that may then come back uh, uh, once the system is still uh, you know, uh, taking care of uh, general neurologists. So we do know that um, the care of other diseases has been suffering of you know, the attention that COVID um, uh, received. And so this is another challenge uh, concerning the stroke management and concerning many other diseases that uh, um, did not um, um, have uh, the usual attention uh, and resources they used to receive in the past. These are just few examples. The initiative had multiple goals. One is to inform the very large European and world community on COVID-19 and the neurological manifestations. A second goal was to get from our scientific panels um, advice and recommendations from the different dis subdisciplines of neurology concerning how to uh, face, uh, you know, uh, questions around the COVID-19, um, thinking about uh, immunodepressed um, patients, I'm thinking about intensive care questions, I'm thinking about stroke and COVID. A third um, um, element of the initiative was to get also personal reports from neurologists involved in the management of COVID patients. We had a very interesting interview from neurologists that are, are or were battling against the disease uh, in their everyday practice. We launched uh, a survey online, uh, just checking rapidly about uh, the experience of neurologists, um, uh, about neurological um, manifestation of the disease, and finally, uh, an, an interesting um, registry and uh, looking a little bit more in depth about um, the neurology of COVID-19 and the relationship with infection, the risk factors, and the demographic of the patients. This is an initiative that was launched at the end of April. It took a few weeks to be prepared. And actually the goal of this registry is to collect prospectively data on neurological manifestation and complications of the COVID pandemic. So we have a registry, as the name says, that collects data on patient demographics, on COVID infection manifestations, and uh, the main focus is obviously neurology, central and peripheral nervous system manifestations, and finally the outcome and some ancillary tests. 
The idea is really to get as much information across uh, the continent and those that would like to join uh, in a prospective way. Now, I'm happy to say that we have over, to, until today, over 150 departments who joined us coming from over 50 uh, countries. So this is a, a very good response uh, across the continent. We have also um, departments from outside Europe and I'm really keen to see how this may improve our knowledge um, uh, around um, neurology and COVID-19. Well, uh, the idea is to start the project, collect the data. We have put in place uh, the technical and methodological um, uh, tools uh, to allow a central uh, collection of the data and also an appropriate uh, statistical analysis. And we have a scientific committee that will take care of you know, the uh, analysis of the data. And we have also an enlarged scientific committee that will then review uh, the you know, what will be then analyzed and, and produced. And the dissemination will be the usual one through publications and through Congresses. I'm happy to say that not on the base of the registry, because this has just been launched, but at the virtual meeting in, uh, in just a few days, we will have two sessions uh, uh, dedicated to COVID-19. And I'm really proud to say that one of the two sessions will be run together with the AAN and uh, its president.